welcome. My name is Kathy A and today I am going to do my best of 2021 luxury and high-end makeup. This is makeup that's a little bit pricier than what you would find in your average drugstore or Walmart or you know Target store. This is something that uh, well some of the brands are very luxurious and high-end a uh, little foo-foo, a little bougie. So I think we're going to start it off with nail polish. And this is something I introduced in my drugstore uh, video for the best of 2021 because it's so nicely priced. However, they do sell it in Sephora and Sephora generally has all the higher end brands. And this is called I'm a Princess, this particular shade. I showed you three other shades in the other one. I really like it. These are only $5 each. They are sold at Sephora. It is the Sephora brand. And it's just a gorgeous nail polish. Very, very uh, shimmery and elegant. I really like this shade a lot. This is called I'm a Princess. Four Scent. Ah. This is something that I tried this year. I tried a lot of sampler packs this year to see if I could find a new signature scent because I've always been sort of a Shalimar girl and um, I don't waver from that all that much, although I do try different things. I tend to always seem to go back to the same ones. And this one really struck me. It's called Layla Lou. And this is just a rollerball version um, from Rosie Jane is the name of the brand. Layla Lou has this beautiful essence of pear. So if you like the smell of fresh pears, this is what Layla Lou smells like. It's a really, really refreshing, um, energizing kind of scent, really good for evening out kind of a thing. For a lip oil or a lip balm, this is the Kosas Wet Lip Oil. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful lip oil. Let me see what shade this is. This is called Dip. <laughs> and let me just show you, it's just a very, light it's just a very light little bit of a sheen but it's a really good lip oil for winter time especially I have really chapped lips and I'm always biting my lips so the Kosas um, the lip thing and there is a, a taste here of it reminds me of like 1960s 1970s candy I'm trying to think of what it is but very, very nice. Kosas Wet Lip Oil. Really, really nice. I use it kind of like a lip primer. Now, a lot of you um, may not know that MAC has an eye primer that's not just the Painterly Paint Pot or the um, Soft Ochre Paint Pot. They actually have a real eye primer, and uh, this is really nice. It's a very thick eye primer and it really grabs hold of your eyeshadow. It's a very, uh, almost feels almost like a Vaseline, a dry Vaseline. Uh, this is their 24 hour extend eye base eye primer and it's clear. You just need a little bit rubbing it all into the eyes. It really grabs hold of your shadow. I really like it. Now, a lot of folks like to use the paint pots, which are actually eyeshadow bases. They are, uh, they come in assortment of different colors. The two popular ones that we see a lot uh, that people use as their eye primers are the Soft Okra, which is this shade. Uh, this is a very warm ivory shade. Um, this one does cover a little bit of discoloration on the eyelids. And then the light one uh, that's got a pink tone to it is called Painterly. But they're paint pots and there are at least, I would say, eight other shades. There's purples and browns and other shades. So this isn't necessarily an eye primer from MAC, but everybody likes it. I like it. I think out of the two, I actually prefer the Painterly paint pot, the light pink one. Um, this one grabs hold, but if you get it too, too much of it in the center here, the front corners of your eyes, you may find that it cracks a little. So I was a little disappointed in that. However, for general shadows, it holds them so well and uh, the whole day. So the 24 hour thing, I don't think I've tested that out, but uh, it does hold pretty well. And that's the 24 hour extend uh, from MAC, but I actually prefer the paint pots which, you know, the soft ochre is the one I'm using now, and I think I'm going back to Painterly, which is a light pink color, pinky ivory. For face primers, 
Um, I absolutely loved when I did the Charlotte Tilbury uh, special. I tried a lot of things that I haven't tried before. I tried the Magic Cream and I tried the primer and then the Hollywood filter and I think these two together look so nice. This one which is called Wonder Glow is a really nice base primer because it fills in a lot of the dings and dents and this really preps your skin uh, to take makeup evenly. If you want a little extra kick of glow underneath you can use the Hollywood Flawless filter which she designed after she saw people using filters on Instagram to make themselves look more airbrushed. She designed this product so that it would do it in real life. I, it doesn't do it in real life for me, okay? <laughs> but I do like it a lot. And I just have these little sample travel size ones. They came in, a, I think they came in a little kit that she had. I absolutely love these two things. And I think they are my choices for face primers in the luxury end. Becca used to have um, a line where they really featured some wonderful highlighting powders and also they had this under eye corrector. Now there are a lot of under eye correctors out there but for some reason this one really is fabulous. I don't know if I have a blemish to put this on but I just tap a little bit on and then you can maybe just tap a little bit of powder over the top of it. This is really good for under eye shadowing or uh, discolorations. Uh, it's also good for on the lid if you have a lot of discoloration or veining on the lid this will cover it so it is a Becca um, under eye cover now Becca went out of business but they were bought up by Smashbox and Smashbox is another really nice brand that has a lot of really good products uh, Smashbox bought up I think they feature their champagne pop highlighter and they also feature this under eye uh, color corrector which I was so glad to see it because this is a really good one. I don't really have a low-end color corrector that I like. Um, when I put on my makeup every day I don't just do all high-end and just drugstore. I actually mix everything up. I mix and match different price points of products depending on you know the colors I'm using, how I feel, if my, how my skin's reacting. Um, so this is a wonderful color corrector from Becca. They're calling it the um, under eye brightening corrector and this is in the fair light shade for concealers um, I was conflicted this year because I've tried so many concealers and I just recently tried this one from Rose Incorporated um, I just wanted to say because I am returning this I you know I just thought because this is almost orange it's and it actually makes my eyes look dark and I look tired when I have it on and it did crack and it kept rolling into the cracks. I couldn't stop it from going into the cracks. So this was kind of a fail. Um, I didn't want to turn this into a faves and flops, but I wanted you to know that I did try this. It was a contender uh, for my best of the year and it didn't make it. So unfortunately, uh, the Rose Ink uh, under eye concealer didn't go very well. Now what did go well was the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Magic Away Concealer, but I had a huge problem with the packaging. Because the, um, the top of this is a sponge and it swells up. And then it, because it swells up, it scrapes against the side of the cover and then pushes that down. It gets caught and it's so hard to pull it apart. I literally cut the sponge. I had to cut the sponge so it would, and cleaned the whole thing so I could push it together and pull it apart easier because it's very hard to pull off there. Uh, this is a wonderful concealer. I just want you to see, um, and you know, <laughs> now I kind of lost the spongy part. I never used that anyway, but this is the concealer. It dries quickly and it's got a brightening effect as well. Uh, once you smooth it out under your eyes and put a light layer of very fine powder, I go back at the end and I take that little journey, that little trip around my face and I press everything back in. And I really do like this, the magic one. And I think I have the fair shade. Number two, number two light. Now this was tied with uh, the Tarte Creaseless Concealer. Uh, this is much lighter shade. I think I would get a darker shade if I were to, to get this full size. I love that they have travel size of these things so you can try them out. 
Uh, this works so well um, and this is really good for spot concealing because it can um, really cover like an age spot or something really well. Here's an age spot. Okay, let me just do that. So you get that and then put a little bit of powder over the top and you are there. Uh, only a little goes a long way. So I think these are two of my favorite concealers. Uh, this one, of course, is a little more economical, but this is Tarte's Creaseless Concealer and this is Charlotte Tilbury's um, Magic Away Concealer in number two. One of those situations where I tried out a couple of popular uh, foundations and didn't like them and a lot of other people liked them. One of them was the LYS or LIS. I'm not sure what you're calling it. But um, this was named as a favorite from a lot of people, so I had to try it. And uh, what I found is that it's really not good if you have dry skin. Um, it's really not good if you have texture, wrinkles, and dry skin because although it seemed to go on nicely and it looks skin-like when it dries down, it does go into the wrinkles and it kept going back into the wrinkles. After I pressed it out, it was still going back in there and it did exaggerate a little bit. It looked a little dry to me for after a couple of hours when I checked in to see what it looked like. It was a little bit dry, so again, you know, I don't want to make this a phase and flops, but uh, I was not happy with this at all. I thought that, you know, it was maybe if you have normal to oily skin, this is perfect for you, but this did not work for me with my deep lines, my light lines under the eyes didn't work, and um, you know, I have some like wrinkles up here in my forehead and it just went right into them. I couldn't get it out. I, I tried dry, you know, the dry set when you use a tissue and dry set it. I tried that. I tried using a little bit of powder. I tried different primers with it. I couldn't make this work. And initially I did like the look of it a lot. It was a really pretty when I first put it on but in like a lot of cases sometimes foundations look pretty when you put them on and a couple hours later you check them out in the mirror and it's a little dry a little patchy it felt it, it came off on my chin you know I do wear a mask we all have to wear masks and everything when we go out right now and some makeups work well with it and some wear right off and I get all the little polka dots on my chin when I have this on so this is going back um, but I wanted you to know I tried it. It was a contender. So that being said, who was good? And this was new to me this year. I absolutely wasn't going to get this. The La Essentielle Fond de Ton Foundation. <laughs> uh, this is from Guerlain Paris. They're also the makers of my infamous Shalimar perfume that I love. This is a beautiful, beautiful uh, foundation and uh, when I saw it <laughs> it looks like artwork it's um, let me just show you it's like crooked isn't that neat it's so pretty it's just so pretty um, when I first swatched this on my hand it's extremely shiny and I thought oh no you know this is going to be way too shiny because it said it was like a um, natural glow foundation, 16 hour wear with sunscreen SPF 20 in it. So with the glow, it didn't dry down like it was shiny. And I thought, oh no, when I put it on, it's going to be shiny. And I have it on today. Um, and it's not shiny. It's not shiny. It's great. Let me just put some here. <laughs> oh it's not shiny at all on your on your face but for some reason on my hand it's very shiny you know sometimes eyeshadows are like that as well you um, think you you've got like a really nice swatch and then you put it on your eye and it's crummy so yeah it's still shiny see it's still shiny but it's not on the face so and I always set with a little powder anyway so that's not a concern but this was just beautiful now I got the shade um, 2N Claire, it's light, 2N, and I think it's a pretty good match for my skin. I was really, really pleased. 
So I was really, really pleased with this one, uh, and it is one of my favorites this year. So get along, Les Essentiels <laughs> Natural Glow Foundation, and the shade I'm using right now is 2N. This is Pat McGrath, and this is the Skin Fetish um, Sublime Perfection Foundation. Uh, this is the second year in a row, I think this is one. I think this one last year as well. This is a, just a beautiful, very forgiving uh, foundation. It is very pricey. I think it's like $64 to $68. Um, you don't need a whole lot. It's a very serum-y kind of um, foundation. Now, I got a shade. Uh, I got this, I think, in summertime, and I wanted to look, you know, sort of, not tan, but I wanted to look healthier than my winter you know fish belly white girl look is so I got a shade that's maybe I would say a half shade too dark for me uh, this particular shade now this particular shade is light medium 9 so I think I probably should go with something like an 8 I don't know but Pat McGrath or Dame Pat McGrath she's actually got her uh, MBE by the Queen, she was she was made a dame in the British uh, Empire, which I think is really cool. Um, she is a makeup artist. She's um, this is a black owned business, so I think it's a really interesting thing. Her price points are so high, though I find them just a little intolerable for her eyeshadow palette. So I don't really talk about Pat McGrath all that much because I really don't like to spend that much money on eyeshadows. I mean, I think there's a, a line you cross where it's ridiculous and she crossed the line. She did. I think for a foundation it's like an investment because if your foundation is good, your whole face can, it's an investment in your face. You know, when you go out, everything else should work pretty well with it and it does play well with others. Blushes, bronzers, highlighters look really nice on it and if you powder it just slightly um, it doesn't move. It's, it holds really well. So the Pat McGrath uh, Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. <laughs> oh, even the name is like, you know, it's like people that have several names with hyphens. You know, it's like there's this little leveling up thing going on there. <laughs> so I do like it. And it's number nine, the medium light. I don't know if I should call this a BB cream or a CC cream. It's a skin tint. It's called the Bare Look Tint from um, Yves Saint Laurent. And this one is just, this was my favorite, you know, really. Before I wound up with La Essentielle there with the ball on the top crooked, um, I like, this was going to be like the one I talked about the most. This is a wonderful uh, skin tint. It's called it's kind of like a BB cream, CC cream kind of thing. It's a beautiful cream, almost a foundation. It's, it's sheer, you get a medium light coverage with it, but it really makes your face look beautiful and healthy. Uh, it doesn't show the lines, it doesn't show the dry patches, it doesn't show the texture. But this is something that is absolutely beautiful. It is called Bare Look Tint from Yves Saint Laurent and it's just an outstanding uh, face makeup foundation. Really wonderful. Now I didn't really use my powder makeup all that much this year but I do use this and sometimes if I have like a shiny foundation or a foundation that's a little too light I will use this Fenty Beauty and this is the Pro Filter um, Soft Matte Powder Foundation and I am using the shade 190 which is a little bit darker than my natural skin tone. Uh, this is so nice, especially um, I usually do a little extra right around my nose area and where my mask goes. So where your mask goes, um, I just have a little bit of powder there so that it helps keep it from, you know, making the lines on my face because <laughs> when I do take my mask off, I don't want to look like I have a little line of demarcation there. Um, and it rubs off on the chin as well. So I always put a little of this uh, on my chin as well. So it has a lot of functional use, uh, utility usage, uh, as well as, 
but just being a regular powder foundation I really didn't use it all that often because the liquids just overpowered it I think I was using liquids all year but I do like the powder especially in summertime it's nice to have that powder foundation on the outside because you know you're you're sweating and you know you're oily and all that stuff so Fenty Beauty and this is the Pro Filter Powder Foundation really really nice I have shade 190 it's about a half shade darker than my own personal skin tone with powder foundations I tend to go up a little bit to a deeper tone because I think it it's a little more forgiving and it doesn't grab on to the dry patches as much Charlotte Tilbury <laughs> yes <laughs> you know I have a friend who um, who says, you know, it's funny how you do that English lady. And I'm like, have you heard her? Have you, have you heard her speak? So I should probably play a tape for him so he can, he can hear her talk. Now I've hit pen on this one. This is my third or fourth one. I don't know. This is number uh, one fair airbrush flawless finish skin reflecting micro powder. Again, the hyphenated names. Got to level it up here. <laughs> So, and I obviously love this. Under the eyes, uh, absolutely. This is a beautiful, beautiful uh, St. Bernard folds under the eyes, on the chin. Uh, this is just a beautiful all-purpose powder, especially nice under the eyes. Um, and also I put it over my eye primer. Uh, it's very nice to kind of set an eye primer. Once you put that primer on, because it's grabby, you can put the powder over it and it kind of diffuses it a little bit so it doesn't crack. And I really love this. Wonderful stuff. The other powder for loose powder, um, I've used this for years and years and years and it's a classic. It's from the 19, I want to say 1940s or 50s. Ben Nye was the, um, he was a makeup artist in Hollywood, did a lot of special effects stuff. He worked on that film The Fly with Vincent Price and uh, he did the special effects makeup for that. So anyway, he had his own makeup line that did go public and this is the Neutral Set Colorless Powder. This used to come in what looked like a spice bottle. It was more this kind of a shape uh, and they have refined it a little bit. It looks a little bit more like a makeup item now. Um, you get a whole ton of this for like six bucks. It's really a good deal. So I think it's it's kind of not, it's not really a drugstore. It's more of an industry thing. But Ben Nye Neutral Set. Uh, this is a very finely milled uh, powder. And you use this stuff and it takes the shine off. It takes the shine off. And he uses it in the movies, well, he used it in the movies. I think his son is now doing it. I'm not sure. But uh, it takes the shine off. See, it took that shiny, shininess out of there. Really nice. Ben Nye. And I never hear people talking about it. It's kind of like all the, the makeup artists know about it. I mean, it's just a standard. It's so finely milled that when you press it in to somebody, it, it holds. Whatever's there, it holds it and it will not let it move. So I want to talk first about this NARS palette. This is the high profile blush palette from NARS. And I didn't buy it and when Sephora had their sale, uh, I went in there looking to get a Laura Mercier shade. I think it was Chai Latte or something. It was a shade that was kind of a brownish color. And I had it in my cart and I went by this and they were showing a demonstrator open. They showed one open. And I couldn't believe it, but this shade here was an exact match for the Laura Mercier shade that I was going to pay $54 for, minus the 20% for the Rouge, Ridiculous Rouge. And I thought, well, you know, for five bucks more, I can get this palette and get all these other shades. <laughs> so I put back the Laura Mercier and I got this one, and it is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Um, this is the one that's like the Laura Mercier shade. I'll just put this right here so you can see it. Um, and then you've got like so many others. They're really, really pretty. And there's something for everybody. I mean, you can build it up to make it very strong. Uh, you can go lighter on it. The, um, the highlight is a gold. And I'm not sure I'm really that crazy about the gold. Let me just put a little on here so you can see it. Oh, 
it's not too bad. Now, it looks here like Freddy Krueger, you know, of Nightmare, what was it, Friday the 13th. <laughs> I had to take a, um, the end of a, of a pen and I had to go, you know, in there. Because I think because they pressed, the impression of this is on all the blushes, and I think whatever they used to press that made it hard pan almost. And when you try to get your, your blush in, your brush in there, it was really hard to get any product on your brush. So I thought, well, that's not good. I'm just gonna do this. Now there are subtle shades, there are stronger shades, and you can build all of them up to be whatever intensity you wish. It's, it's good for um, any skin tone. It's a very, very beautiful palette, and I, I'm so glad I got it because I have my Laura Mercier shade that I like, plus I've got all these others for the $5 more. And then after the discount, it was even more of a discount, so uh, really good. This is the um, High Profile from NARS. Now talk about fancy packaging. Oh my god. It does look like a corsage box from the prom. Um, this is from Winky Lux, and I consider them to be a luxury brand. Even though they do sell them now in Target, I still think they're a luxury brand. Now, this little ball has a beautiful... Look at this presentation. Isn't that amazing? I don't know if you can see it. And it's just a subtle, beautiful pink... And um, let me see if I, I think I have it on this side. It's just so pretty. It's a cream blush. Comes in its own little corsage box. Uh, it's I think it's 20 bucks. And this is Tea Rose. This is the most um, neutral of the shades. The other two shades they had, one was a deep reddish mauve, and the other one was kind of a bright reddish color. So this was the only one that was a little more neutral and warm toned. Uh, and this is called Tea Time. So cool. Um, there were two other cream blushes. I guess cream blushes were winning on this. Uh, one is the LYS and I did like this. I think the packaging is so unique. I mean it's so beautiful, the, uh, the triangle. So unusual. This is a cream blush and I believe I have it on this side. It's a cream to powder formulation, I think, because once you put it on your skin, it seems, it feels dry. It doesn't feel creamy, sticky, tacky, anything like that. And it's a very pretty color. This particular color is called Kindness. And it's LYS or LIS. Well, I don't know how they're called. This is like the NYX or NYX, you know. I know that NYX is called NYX because NYX was the goddess of the nighttime. And they named themselves after the goddess of the nighttime. This, I don't know, Lys, L-Y-S, yeah. You know, at the beginning of most of the year, I use this as my cream blush. This is the Tarte um, in Peach Sunset. This is the Breezy um, cream blush. Very similar. I think this is a little more clay-like in its consistency. So uh, I feel like there's a little more substance to this blush and it's a similar color to the LYS one. So I, I do like this very much. I got in a kit where they had a lot of different products, you know, Sephora's favorites or something, one of those things. I think that's where it came from. This is Peach Sunset. I see a lot of people love that shade. Um, it's a cream blush and I think with aging skin, and I am 63, gonna be 64 in February. I can't believe that. Holy cow, <laughs> oh my God. Um, I, I really like the idea of cream blushes and cream bronzers. I think they go really well uh, with aging skin and they seem to be very forgiving. For contour, this wins. It's won a few times, I think. I love this. This is from Fenty Beauty. It is, this is Mocha. Mocha and Amber are the two shades that are kind of a, a muted brown color. And when you put them on, they... Um, they sheer out so nicely. They look very natural as a blush, as a bronzer. You can get that uh, contrast and dimension that you're looking for. 
and uh, the mocha is good if you are medium light to light uh, the amber is good if, if you are medium light to darker shade and then there are darker shades also if you have really deep skin tones but this is just amazing and this is mocha and it is a stick you you turn it turns up it turns down <laughs> and you can you can put it on with a brush I like to put it on with my fingers I like to put creams on with my fingers you can also put it on with a sponge absolutely love it it's wonderful and that's from Fenty Beauty for uh, bronzer I do like the Charlotte Tilbury bronze um, the film star bronze and glow I think this is a perfect bronzing shade let me see if you can I don't know if it's gonna show up or not um, I start off looking okay and then I start adding makeup products so I don't know <laughs> all right let's put it here maybe we can decollete it here there we go this is a really nice um, bronze and it also comes with a highlighter which is a very subtle highlighter I think it works really nicely this is just a beautiful uh, duo and this also is a miniature the larger size uh, if you want to get something like that I like getting the little ones because you can um, you know work through them in a year and then get a new one I'm a little concerned with hygiene and uh, the longevity of a product before it starts to break down or get bacterial stuff in it ick <laughs> so and let me just wipe it off so it's shiny again <laughs> Yeah, these beautiful rose gold um, covers, they do get fingerprints on them. So that was the Filmstar Bronze and Glow, also from Sephora. And I showed this in my drugstore favorites, but I use this almost every day. And it is from Sephora, so I'm going to bring it up. And it's also actually in the Sephora collection. It's actually one of the more expensive items there. So this is from the Golden Hour um, Highlight Series. This is called Dusk. And this is... I'm running out of room. Oh, let's see if I can. This just makes you look airbrushed. There's nothing. There's no, you know, um, highlight like really streaky lines kind of a thing going on. It's just so beautiful and subtle. Let me just put my fourth highlight on this cheek so you can see it. Let's see if it'll go on this side. I got two on here. Yeah, not bad. And then down the nose, right here, you can put it in decolletage, decollete, okay. And this is Dusk. This is the Golden Hour series of highlighters from Sephora. My absolute favorite for the whole year, bar none. I absolutely love this. So, you know, the other highlighter that came in the Filmstar Bronze and Glow is nice. This one to me is, yeah, bedazzled. To tie it all together, this is Charlotte Tilbury's Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. Ready? <sighs> Wonderful. Now this has a bit of a spice uh, kind of scent to it. I want to say it's like an allspice scent to it. It doesn't have a floral scent. It's it's like a spice. And I, I love this. This works good. I'm about halfway down in my jar here. Uh, I purchased this when I was doing my special on Charlotte Tilbury and all of her products. The one with the dead fish, I was explaining. And the, where the dead fish fit in, I don't know if I've got it here. He's around somewhere. <laughs> some of the little ones are here. These are some of the, the pens that came with it and you know you can write with it. <laughs> I had said that my before, before I added makeup, I looked like a fishmonger. So I had the dead fish case and I had these little these little things. Anyway, <clears throat> airbrush flawless setting spray. It just melts everything together it makes you look really cohesively put together professionally put together and it holds your makeup in place I think the whole day and it's wonderful and it doesn't smell florally icky yucky it is like a spice cabinet kind of smell and that's I think it's all spice that I'm smelling like a coriander or something like that it's that kind of a spice smell so, and it's pleasant. It's not bad at all. I don't, I don't know. 
for brows. Um, there are two pencils that I like. One is from Thrive Cosmetics. I did do a special on Thrive uh, this year and I revisited some of their products. Um, I had read about the lawsuit and how it was settled and that they're really good people after all. <laughs> um, so I bought the, the eyebrow pencil because this is what they were donating to the Look Good Feel Better program um, for women going through cancer treatment. When they lose all their hair, they lose their brow hair, uh, lashes, everything else. And so uh, Thrive Cosmetics donates cosmetics to these programs. Well, they also donate money. And that was where the controversy came in. Somebody said, well, wait a minute, you're not giving makeup to uh, one per one per makeup, you're giving money. And they were giving to, they, they gave $100,000 to a nurse, a uh, nursing school student to help her through her nursing school training. Uh, they donated to the fire victims in California when they had all those wildfires. Um, because I'm telling you, a lipstick or an eyebrow pencil isn't really going to be as effective as giving money to help somebody rebuild their lives. So I was all for them. You know, I thought that was really cool. But they, they had to change the verbiage on their mission statement. And now it just says, every product you buy, we will um, improve or help another woman thrive. You know, and so they kind of took out the thing, we'll give one product every time you buy a product. So they took that out. Okay, long story long. I'm <laughs> sorry. This is the eyebrow pencil that started it all. Um, she had a good friend that uh, was going through cancer treatment, lost her hair. She developed a product line. She was working at Sephora at the time and she, de she developed a product line for cancer people who needed a little more color on their face, needed their eyebrows back, needed lashes. She did false lashes that are self-adhesive. Um, she did a lot of really good things and named lipsticks. She named all of the products after cancer survivors and cancer victims. So they all of the products have names of people on them. Um, and this is Thrive and this is in Christine. And Christine was her friend. So I think that's really cool. Really good brush here. Good pencil. I have the blonde shade. And this is tied with the Charlotte Tilbury. And I love the Charlotte Tilbury because um, it's got a slightly uh, bigger point on it. And I love the spoolie. It's a tough little spoolie. I mean, it really, um, really pushes things up. And I, I don't know if it's just tighter wound or what, but I love the spoolie on this a lot. And it just feels like there's more product in this than there is in the Thrive. So I think the two of them are pretty much tied. I love the idea of the cause, the cause part of Thrive Cosmetics. It is more expensive because of that. Because they donate a portion of what you pay for it, um, you're paying for the item and then you're kind of donating a little extra money towards the causes that they donate to. But that's why their prices are a little bit high. Um, Charlotte Tilbury always has outstanding products. She was a runway. Um, makeup artist so she saw the girls when they came in after long weekends tired skin tired eyes and she really learned to pull things together and she developed this line to complement her own business and it really um, transfers well onto the regular everyday lady i i always feel very elegant because the packaging is really nice it's weighted it's a, a rose gold which they say is supposed to be the most attractive color to women over 40. <laughs> A little little mind mind games there <laughs> so those are the two brow products and this benefit this is a clear brow gel and I was like well eh, yeah I don't really need a clear brow gel what does it do well it's a paddle shape and it has like um, combs on either end and what it does is it really holds it's kind of like hairspray or hair gel for your eyebrows you push it on here and then you comb through your brows and it gives them that wispy look that's so popular right now. I mean, when I was young, um, just plucking everything out so it was a thin little line so you, everybody looked like Clara Bow <laughs> um, and went to the disco and we had a little one thin little line and that was just great. Well, now, you know, we need those brows back. We need them back. And this is one of those products that does it. This is the um, 
This is the 24 hour brow setter and it really does hold your brows in place and it makes them nice and feathery looking and it's clear so it works with anybody's uh, color eyebrows and I like that. Uh, sometimes the ones that deposit color can look waxy on your eyebrows and show funny especially if you're going blonde you can see this little like I don't know, it looks almost like scales on your eyebrows. So I like the clear a lot for this and this is the Benefit uh, 24 hour brow setter. I wasn't sure where to put this because it fits in so many places. This is the Rude Cosmetics Nude York Times Square Face and Eye Palette. This is amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay, in this corner, in this corner, <laughs> You've got um, a beautiful highlight. You've got a beautiful lighter blush. You've got a deeper blush. You've got a bronzer. Let me see if I can do this. Everybody does swatches so well and I don't. Okay, these are the really bad swatches. Um, so you have your face covered here, right? And now you have the eyes. Okay, you have your light lid shade, you have your transition shade, you have your deep corner shade, and then you have all these pretty colors that you can fill in uh, to do like a little dazzle, you know, a little razzle dazzle. Let's put some of this on. What have we got here? I did this during the drugstore thing and I used this blue, this teal blue, <laughs> and it was like suddenly there was this teal blue pop of color. Holy cow. Um, yeah, so it's just, you can add a little touch of elegance with your uh, eye makeup by adding some of these shades in. But I like this. The eye palette's good. The face palette's good. This is a perfect all-in-one palette. This is my favorite palette of the year. Um, so I have different things for eyeshadows, but man, I tell you, this was so good for traveling, for, you know, staying overnight, Christmas time or Thanksgiving, if you're staying over somebody's house, this is the perfect thing to carry. And Root Cosmetics, they're a very wonderful company. They have unusual colors. They have different types of eyeshadow shades. I'm not crazy about some of their other products, but this is probably one of the best products I've seen in the makeup world in a long time. So speaking of eyeshadow palettes, let's start with the small one and I'll move to mediums and then I'll go to large. How's that? <laughs> small is, of course, and I talked about this when I, um, I used this years ago when it first came out and then because of all the shadow palettes and everything else that we YouTubers do, I never got back to it. Uh, this is the Sophisticate palette from Charlotte Tilbury and it has a mirror on one side and then it has your perfect basic functional eye. You've got a light shade for your lid, you've got your crease shade, you've got um, a gray and a brown for deepening the corners or lining. Uh, you can add a little bit of eye drops to your brush and dip it on the side and you can make a liner that's a little dark, a little more intense. I absolutely love this palette. This is like the perfect everyday functional eye palette and it's just four colors and yes it is a little bit of an investment but you could have this on your makeup stand and not need anything else if you want to have fancy schmancy shimmery things you can get those separately but man this was so good um, the sophisticate from Charlotte Tilbury I'm sorry I'm a broken record with these I love Viseart I do I think that they have the formula down they have really interesting combinations in their specialty palettes um, and then their standard palettes are just beautiful they are things that I go back to time and time again and, and it's like four years in a row now and I'm really sorry you hate it. it's like oh geez she's doing the Viseart again <laughs> I'm like so sorry. I like this and until I convert all of you, I'm going to probably keep talking about it. This is the um, Cool Mats. This is the Cool Mats. 
And what are, you've got your three basics, your light for lid, your transition, and your dark for corners. Then you've got some grays, you've got some blues, you've got some purples. This is an amazingly wonderful palette. Now for their specialty palette, and they usually come up with one every year, and I usually get one in my lucky bag, which by the way, uh, Beautylish is going to be doing their lucky bags, and I probably don't, I shouldn't even tell you because you're going to get in line ahead of me. Maybe I shouldn't tell you. So the Cool Mattes from Viseart is my favorite uh, medium size palette. Uh, specialty palette is the Viseart. Uh, this one is the Love Letter. Letter d'amour Paris. Paris. Paris Love Letter. Uh, this is the palette that I purchased this year. Um, it's got a beautiful shimmer silver. It is a duochrome silvery blue. And then we have this beautiful pale purple periwinkle. Speaking of periwinkle, let me just put that right here. Um, we've got a beautiful champagne. We've got a tan. We've got a yellowy tan. We've got this beautiful green, which is far more subtle on your lid than it appears in the pan. So let me just They're very subtle, you know, even though they look really garish sometimes in the pan, when you put them on your eye, they just they just add a little sparkle of something special, something different. Got a nice peach tone, you got a nice transition shade, a nice lid shade, uh, beautiful light ivory, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And then we've got the champagne uh, rose gold. And we've got that deep brown color, which you can use in your corners to deepen up your corners and make a beautiful textured uh, dimensional eye. Absolutely beautiful palette. Uh, this is my favorite kind of smaller specialty palette, and this is the Paris Love Letter from Viseart. So for my large palette, I keep going back to the chocolate bar palette and this one, and I think this one's going to do it because we are thinking luxury, and I just always go back to this. This is Too Faced Chocolate Gold. It's an oldie but goodie, and you know what? In this time and age when we really need to repurpose, reuse, recycle. <laughs> this is something that because we're just like little toddlers at Christmas time opening up a gift and looking for the next gift to open up, we're like that. We YouTuber beauty presenters are like that with makeup. We just like, oh, this is a great palette. What's the next one? You know, and it's like, <laughs> we just can't stop. We can't help ourselves. So to stop and take a deep breath and go back and look at what I really like this is one of them, and this is the Too Faced Chocolate Gold, the candy bar palette. You have a mirror on one side, and you've got these beautiful colors. You've got your ivory for the base, you've got your transition, you've got your black and your dark brown for deepening the corners. You've got a lot of shimmers, a beautiful green here, a gold, you've got a purple, you've got a blue. Um, it's absolutely a gorgeous palette and you can do a lot of eye looks from this plus just a basic eye if you don't want to do fancy stuff but you've got your options if you're wearing green for Christmas if you're wearing um, pinks Valentine's Day you've got um, you know light blues baby blues silvery colors for um, you know New Year's Eve parties things like that You've got it all covered, and they gave you an extra long ivory eye base. You can use that as an eye base, a primer setter. Uh, it's a really nice thing. You've got a beautiful copper here, and that's good for lining under the eyes to give a little sultry look to your eyes. Um, you've got the gold, and you've got this beautiful, almost metallic looking um, duochrome whitish color. I love this green. Christmas time, St. Patty's Day. This is just a beautiful palette, and I, you know, I am not going to apologize for not taking one of the new things that came out this year because I do not buy the Mothership palettes. I do not buy the Natasha Denona's. I get the look-alike ones. I get the ones from the copycat companies like You Can Be and C Color. I don't want to spend $175 on a palette. Can't do it. So this is just year after year has impressed me. This is the uh, 
lash primer and I like this. This is the, the Lancome Seals uh, lash primer and what's nice about this is that uh, it's encased. It's got a nice liquidy encased um, fibers. I think the Essence one that I premiered at my drugstore favorites, I think this actually is so close to this. I mean really, it really is. I can't tell the difference between these two but I do have this because I got it as free samples and I think a lash primer is something kind of a new phenomenon over the past five years or so people have been doing this. It's like the first layer and you know I, I think I used this um, story that when we were little in the 60s they gave us these little red pills and we chewed them and they stuck to all of the crap on our teeth so we had to brush our teeth until all the red was gone so this is a similar philosophy where you you put this stuff on your eyelashes a you curl your lashes first and then you put this stuff on them and it holds the lash curl you're supposed to let it wait for like 20 30 seconds and then you put your mascara over the top it's the curl is held um, you've got that extra layer so your your lashes look fuller and longer um, and this is really nice. The Lancome Sills is really nice. I'm not sure I would buy it, the full size, because I just used the Essence one, and I swear they're the same thing. It's just one costs a caboodle of money. So I probably shouldn't say that during my um, luxury and high-end makeup video. <laughs> I don't know. I'm such a cheapskate. I really am. So you know, when I talk about this stuff, I really mean it. I'm not promoted by anybody. They're scared of me. They are, because I will tell it like it is. If I don't like something, I will call it crap, as you know. I have two mascaras here that are good for lower lashes. They're good for um, getting to the base of the lash on the top, um, but they're not the biggest, fullest lashes. But I do like them. One of them is the It Cosmetics Tight Line Mascara, and I talked about this a few years ago, and I had forgotten about it, and I just saw it in the store, and I thought, wow. Look how skinny this, um, this brush is. And the, what's good about that is you can stick it right next to your eyelid, literally, and roll it down just a little, roll it back up, and it makes like a little line. It really captures the bottom where your lashes are attached. It captures it and coats them. Because a lot of times we miss that, and I think it gives the optical illusion that our lashes are longer when you can coat the bottoms of them as well. Most of us just coat the top half of our lashes and we leave the bottoms open because we can't, with these really large brushes, can't reach there or we, you know, poke ourselves in the eye if we try it. So this is the tight line. It's like a three in one. You can do that, roll it. You can do it on the bottom as well. You can go at the top, push against your lashes and it makes almost like a line. So this is an eyeliner, a tight liner, and a mascara, and it's really good for your lower lashes especially because it's so tiny, it reaches all the edges, and I think that's just great that it reaches the edges. Similar to that is this MAC uh, Giga Black. I like this one because it feels more substantial, and it also the formulation I think is a little better, um, the MAC Giga Black. This has a very thin, tiny little brush, so you can do almost the same thing. And this, the formulation makes it so you can use it for your regular mascara as well. And it's not huge, big, boom and lashes like I normally like, but it's so good. And you can do that thing too, where you reach the corners of your lashes for that, you know, that you would miss with the larger brushes. So these two are really good. Uh, I think out of the two, the MAC Giga Black is my choice. Um, but the best mascara, and the one that I just love, my big honkin' lashes mascara, is Thrive Cosmetics. Um, this is the Liquid Lash Extensions. And they aren't kidding. I mean, this stuff, once you put it on, um, I think the first couple of times you use it, it's just meh. And then it, when it reacts with the, um, with the air, get it as close as you can to the bottom of your lashes and go up. And then once you'll, once you'll find, once it dries, it puts a tube around each lash. So they call it a tubing mascara. It puts a little tube of product around each lash. So it gives you a lot of volume, 
a lot of length and it doesn't ding, it doesn't smear, it doesn't crack. And at night when you want to take it off, I take it off in the shower because when you stick your face in the shower, you just pull, literally pull it off. After your lashes have gotten wet with the water, you literally pull it off and it looks like little spider legs dancing out down into the drain. So I love this. Plus uh, Thrive Cosmetics, is, again, for every time I buy one of these mascaras, Thrive Cosmetics does donate to a good cause to help other people thrive. So it's a feel-good mascara. It's absolutely the best. I've tried hundreds if not a thousand mascaras and you know this because I, I had seven I think last time I did my faves and flops. I'm trying anything that comes out I try it. I'm always looking for the best deal, the best mascara and something that you know won't smear, won't crack, won't flake, won't leave dings up here and this one hits all the boxes plus that cosmetic part of it where they're giving to causes when I buy a mascara, it's a feel good thing too. So Thrive Cosmetics Mascara. For fake lashes, um, I do not buy high end lashes. I don't buy mink lashes. I don't believe in that kind of animal stuff. And, and I'm trying not to get on my soapbox about animal cruelty and testing for makeup, but <clears throat> okay, I just did, I'm sorry. This is Sephora Lash Adhesive. And this is really nice. It's sold in Sephora. Um, I just have a small bottle of it. This is the clear. And once it dries, it goes kind of bluish color. And then once it dries, it does go clear, but it's really uh, identifiable on your eye. I like to paint my eye first and then stick the lash on. I have done it where I stick it on the lash. You have to wait like 20 seconds for it to get a little bit tacky. So then when you stick it on, it'll hold better. If you stick it on before it's ready, it swishes all around, it flops up, and then there's all kinds of mess that you have to deal with. So um, I do like this. It's a good all-purpose lash adhesive, and it's not expensive. Um, to fill in the gap, when you put false lashes on, there's usually a little gap of skin, or you do need to introduce it to the rest of your eye if you're just using an outer lash like I have on today. I just have lashes on the outer part of my eyes so the inner part I had to put a little bit of a line in there to introduce it so it was more of a smooth transition didn't look quite so starkly bad and let me just put this right here this is the KVD Trooper eyeliner and there's something about the brush there's something about this eyeliner um, it's a fine tip eyeliner. You have to shake it up. I use this. I think hundreds of, hundreds of YouTubers use this. And KVD stands for something different. It's not Kat Van D anymore. She's not involved with the company. The company KVD owns a lot of high-end brands. So it's okay to buy it again, okay? It's all right. You're not supporting Kat Von D. <laughs> so let's get over that, okay? Let's get the politics out. All right, so this is Tattoo Liner, and it's in black, or Trooper, as they call it. It's the best eyeliner for um, drawing a straight line. Even if you have wobbly, shaky old lady hands, you can do it. Just press down a little bit, and it works really nicely. And it's perfect for underneath false lashes. We're going into lips, and we're almost done. Almost done. I have two lip liners. Uh, one is MAC and this is um, Boldly Bare. This is a beautiful um, lip liner. It's like a Your Lips but better if you have a medium to medium to light skin. This is probably your lip color. Uh, and then the other one is from Sorme. And Sorme, even though they are sold in the drugstore, I think they're on an expensive price point. You can go to their website and buy this. This is Baby Doll from Sorme. And this is a beautiful, muted, mauve uh, nude color. Uh, this is the square. Pencils, you can use them in, and I demonstrated it in my drugstore uh, video that you can, you know, sharpen them in a regular round tip sharpener, no problem. 
So it's kind of a tie and they're both about the same price. The um, baby doll I can use as a lipstick as well, which is kind of a bonus point there. But the Boldly Bear I think goes with more things and blends more in with my lip color for lipsticks. When these were introduced a few years ago, I bought probably eight of them, and this was one of the ones I bought. And then over time, I wound up giving it away or throwing it away, or it got mucky or something. This is the Angel Alessandra color. Absolutely beautiful from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the uh, lipstick, Angel Alessandra. Of course, she was one of the um, Victoria's Secret models. I think when they had the angel costumes, I think that's where it came from. It has this little own sarcophagus that you can stick it in if you want. I don't. I mean, I'm not a packaging person. I don't save things like they're collectibles because it's to me it's makeup. It's a hygiene product to me and you throw it away when you're done with it. Or you recycle the tube or in Mac's case you can return the tubes and get a free lipstick. But this is Charlotte Tilbury's Angel Alessandra. My favorite lipstick this year. There are two more items here and they are both pillow top but one is a lip plumper gloss and this is got an unusual shaped uh, applicator almost like a forked tongue, like a little serpent tongue. <laughs> I don't know what she's trying to say there. Little minty thing going on there, a little bit of peppermint, you can feel it, and peppermint of course will encourage blood flow to the area. So you'll get the pumped up lips a little bit, not as good as Olivia's. Is it Olivia, is that her name? Sophia, Livia, uh, her niece. I think it's Sophia or Olivia. Olivia, I think, yeah. Um, beautiful. And then this one, and then this one is the Lip Topper. And this is a beautiful, shimmery lip gloss topper to give that wet look, beautiful, um, like your lips are very moist. It's a very useful look. It's a very pretty look. You just look really dressed to the nines with this. Wonderful. And those are both in pillow talk shade. So that pretty much does it for my luxury line. I hope all of you are having a wonderful holiday season. Um, I will be back with my best of lifestyle, skin care, hair care, beauty tools, brushes, that sort of thing. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me out with my channel. It helps me get seen by other people. It helps me out. Um, and I will be doing some fun uh, videos for you coming up very, very soon. Everybody take care. Be safe. Happy New Year. Toodles.